Hi, welcome to a short video on the practical usage of Microsoft Query. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can create a pivot table from multiple worksheets of a workbook. For other MS Excel related solutions, you may visit my website ashishmathur.com. Okay, so here's what the data actually looks like. For the month of January, I have uh, data for about 20 or 19 odd columns or so with about 65,000 rows of data here. Now, this is a simple sales data set for the month of January showing as to on what date, what article was sold, what brand was sold, what category of uh, product was sold, what was the MRP at which it was sold, whom it was sold to and so on. Now, given this data set, I have, uh, so as I said, this is, the, this is for the month of January. I have something similar for the month of February as well. Now, since all this data is coming off my ERP, there is structural similarity across all these different worksheets of the workbook. So just as I had 19 columns for the month of January, I had the same 19 columns over here as well, but with fewer rows for the month of January. So that's only 40,430 rows of data here. And uh, for the for the month of March, once again, the same 19 columns with about 65,000 rows of us, uh, with about 40,000 rows of data there as well. So I have a total of about um, 157 or 1,000 odd rows of data from which I wish to crea uh, create one pivot table to analyze data for these three months. Now, the technique which you're which you're about to discuss can obviously apply to as many worksheets of this workbook. And um, in the absence of using Microsoft Query, if I had to solve this problem the conventional way, this is what I would have done. Since I do not know any way of creating a pivot from multiple worksheets of a workbook, I would have manually copied and pasted the three worksheets into a fourth worksheet, one below the other, generating a running range of about one like uh, of about 160,000 rows of data, and I would have then created a pivot table from that sheet so created. Now, in building this work, there are two major problems that I foresee. First and foremost, when you copy data from three worksheets into a fourth worksheet, the file size would double even without creating the pivot table, let alone what would happen once the pivot gets created on that fourth worksheet. Uh, next, the pivot table that so gets created is in no way linked to the three worksheets over here because they aren't feeding into the pivot in the first place. The pivot is gen getting generated from the fourth worksheet over there. So, which means that if I carry out any change in the three worksheets over here, I have to carry out the very same change on the fourth worksheet as well before, the, before I refresh the pivot table. So in this particular technique, uh, I'm about to discuss with you how you can create a pivot table directly from these three worksheets without having to do any manual copying and pasting using something called Microsoft Query. So here are the steps that one, you have to actually follow. I'm going to select this entire data set of the giant sheet, which is from A1 to S65000 S and assign it a name. Let's call that dummy and I enter. Just to quickly cross check, if I go to A1, do a control A, I see a dummy appearing in that particular name box there. I then what I do is I actually go to insert and convert this into a table. Now my reason for converting this range into a table is simply that if I add further rows of data on a refresh of my pivot table, those new rows should become part of my pivot table. So A1 to S65000 is the range which I want to convert into a table. Does my table have headers? Yes, it does. I click on OK. Now, I do the same process for the Feb sheet as well. Do a control A, select it from A1 to S40,430. I give it a name, dummy numeric one. Enter, quickly cross check. I see a dummy one appearing in the name box there. Convert this into a table. The shortcut key is control T, T for table, enter. And I do the very same for the last worksheet there as well. Control A, dummy two, enter. Quickly cross check, dummy 2 seems to appear right and convert this into a table as well. Now, here is what we do. I open another worksheet in the same workbook, save the file and I now go to data from other sources from Microsoft query. Under choose data source, I choose Excel files, click on OK. And since this file is saved on the desktop, monthly sales data, I navigate to my desktop, C colon users, my username, desktop. It's a file on the desktop called monthly sales data dot XLSX. Click on OK. You now see the three named ranges over here. One by one, I individually move all the columns of these three named ranges to the right hand side box. Once that's done, 
I click on next. The query wizard cannot continue because it cannot join the tables in your query. You must join the tables manually. When I click on OK, the Microsoft query window opens up over here, which has two distinct portions. Here is the named range portion and, that, and that's the data area. Here, there's a little button there called SQL. I click on SQL and delete all the content from the white box over there and instead write a statement saying select space star space from space dummy so that in layman terms would mean select all the columns from the name range dummy then i see a union all u n i o n space a double l which basically can be understood like a plus statement and then i simply copy this paste over here with a dummy one yet another union all for the last table that i want to append so i want to append three uh, three named ranges over here, dummy, dummy one and dummy two by using the union all statement. If I now click on okay, cannot, uh, can't be represented graphically, do you want to continue anyway? I click on okay and uh, in a flash of a second, I actually get an appended database of about 150 or 160 or 1000 rows of data. Now the last step that's left is to transfer this data back to the Excel file via a pivot table. So I go to file, return data to Microsoft Excel I get the import data box over there, wherein I want to directly create a pivot table. So I choose the second option. Where do you want to put the pivot, uh, put the data for maximum real estate? I assign cell A1 over there and I click on OK. There's a counter that runs at the bottom right hand side of my Excel file. And once that reaches 160,000, I'd see the familiar drop areas of the pivot table. This may take a while depending upon the speed um, of your system, but should any which may happen within about 10 to 12 seconds or so, I get the similar pivot table structure over here. Now let's just see as to uh, what my brand wise revenue is. So if I drag my brand to the row labels here and down below, if I drag my sales value over here, I get a count of sales value instead of the sum. So I right click, summarize by, I choose sum and much to my surprise, I get a zero over there. Now let's see why this is actually happening. So if I go to the Jan sheet and if I sum the sales value column up in the taskbar below, I see there's a, there's a sum appearing over there, which means these are all numeric entries. If I do the same for the Feb sheet as well over there, I once again get to see a number appearing again, sum, which means these are all numerics as well. When I go to the March sheet, the problem over here is that there is no entry in that sales value column, which is why there is no sum happening over there. Now, what I can do is to work around this problem in the very first cell, which appears under the heading of the March worksheet. I'll just give a zero over there. Now, when I go to my pivot table worksheet, right click and refresh, the counter would run yet again at the bottom right hand side there. And once that reaches 150 or 160,000, you will actually see the sales value appear for each of those brands. So if I were to just change the numeric formatting for them to be clearly visible, that's the cumulative revenue from three sheets of data for the two brands. And now here's the best part of this technique actually. So if I were to, let's say go to the Jan worksheet and in yet another row below, let me add a brand 100, the sales value for which was 12,000 and I may add similar number of rows to the other two worksheets as well. If I go now and refresh the pivot table, uh, once the counter reaches 150,000 or so, we should get to see brand 100 appear inside the pivot table over here. Yeah, so there is no need to copy and paste. The three sheets remain intact and you can dynamically create a pivot table from the three worksheets, not only from the rows that you had when you started the process, but also uh, the new rows that you added to either of these three worksheets. I hope you enjoyed watching this short video. Thank you very much.